Last time I talked to you, it was about Tredavious White, and that was a bit ago. When I hear Sean McDermott talk about the progress in which Tredavious White's making, it almost always seems incredibly positive, and I continue to see time and time again videos and pictures of Tredavious White really grinding out on the field trying to get back. Do you got any updates for us as of right now as to where Tredavious White's at? Has anything changed since the last time you and I spoke? Yeah, so when he debuted in practice and they showed him sprinting and kind of landing on the one leg, he he didn't – he looked good. Listen, yeah. to be honest, he looked good to the naked eye, but there is a lot more to that to the trained eye, and he wasn't there. I'm calling that 80%. Okay. His knee wasn't flexing all the way when he was running, and he wasn't uh, landing on one leg comfortably. Uh, so then the next week, uh, someone else put more footage out. We didn't see him sprint. I doubt that he fixed that knee flexion, uh, but his single leg landing looked better, but mm-hmm. not great. Okay. Um, he lands on one leg. Good. He's looking down a little bit. Uh, this is Thad Brown's video. He sent okay. out where he stepped off the plyometric box, landed on one leg and then jumped up. But to be honest, when he jumped back up on one leg, he, he bucked it up real quick. He didn't like extend his knee and leap up on one leg. Like he's going for a layup. You could tell he's still favoring it. It's progress, but it's not good enough. And then he's still going to have to get into game shape, and then he's going to have to mirror premier receivers. I still am in the bucket that he's close, but if you rush him in week one, he's going to have limitations. Limitations can lead to compensatory injuries. Obviously, worst case scenario, he blows his ACL again because he's not at full speed. But, I mean, I'm talking like tendonitis is, throws out his back because because he's kind of been limping on it and favored it. Um, that's that's kind of the trend that would happen if I think if he goes back week one. You can put him on IR or the pup, which would take him out for four weeks. The only problem is he can't practice with the team for the four weeks. He yeah. could go PT up the wazoo being on the, uh, the, the you know, um, the means and stuff. But he, he still is not getting on-field training. That on-field training takes, you know, for a veteran, you could say you could speed it up a little bit, but it's like, you know, two to six weeks. It varies. So yeah. so if he comes off the pup and you think he's just going to jump in week five, I still think that's a sticky situation. If you put him in, if you make him have the active roster and you decide it's a numbers game, you let him practice for two weeks with the team, and then you activate him week three because you just make him like, you know, inactive for two weeks, that's possible. But if you really want to do the safest thing, what's good for the team and what's good for Trey, you put him on the pup, then you have a 21-day window, three weeks, to let him practice with the team, and you decide when you want to activate him. If in that three weeks he looks really good and they have some injuries, activate him, whatever. If everything's going smooth, we're 4-1, and 5-0, and oh, just let him fucking practice. Get better. You hit the bye week. You grab an extra I was just going to say, it, yeah. And then he come he comes back week eight, which would be our seventh game because we're coming off a of bye week. Sunday night football in Buffalo against Green Bay. So I, I mean, know it's all that based would be, on what that be, would be, be, be a scene that would be. Yeah, no kidding, right? And I know it all depends on what he's showing, right? But in your opinion, if it's not legitimately one hundred percent, are you in favor of waiting till after the bye? Is that kind of the vibe you're getting? Well, you're giving the, off? Here's the here's the problem. It's it's not going to be one hundred percent, even if you wait till the bye. Okay. But he'll be 95% and he's going to mature through the season. You could speed that up a little bit. I put this in that ar- article, when's Trey coming back? But you could bring him in at 85% week one, but he's 85%. You know what I mean? Yes. And if you're going to like do him on a snap count reduction, but then something happens during the game and then he's thrust in the lineup, now that's a scary situation. You can wait till week five ish and then he'll be 90%. But still, it's, you know, that's still a little, a little touchy. Why not just play it safe, give them up, give them the pop, and then you decide when you want to pull them back. you got three weeks. Um, that's just how I see it. Listen, he looks good. He looks physically great. His torso's yes. tight. His arms are ripped. He's working out. He might, he might even be, might be a little gassed up. Who knows? Yeah. But all I know, all I know is, I, you know, me personally, I've worked with some really good mentors who make a return to play test from an ACL. Mm-hmm. They grade them on single leg landing, single leg jumps, how they sprint. He's he what he, he wasn't passing the test last week. Yeah. So if he's going to pass the test with a week left before the season, he probably could. 
it will, but it's like if someone just gets, you know, good enough to practice, that doesn't mean they're going to be good enough for a game in a week. you got to ramp that up some more. So based on the timeline, the fact that early September he's going to be just good enough, I think the safe thing to do is make him even better and have him as close as possible to 100% when you bring him back. We're not trying to break the drought this year. We're trying to win the Super Bowl. And if we can get through the first wave of the season pretty healthy and in a pretty good shape, it's going to do wonders at the finish line.